Where's the, which can Hello, everybody. We're here at Build, the 2015 edition. My name is Seth Juarez. I'm pretty excited because we are building some cool stuff for developers to take advantage of all around the world. In fact, we have some people here uh, watching from Budapest. Everyone say hello to Budapest on camera one. Guys, say hello, Budapest. That's right, they're watching. I don't know how many hours they are ahead, but we also have folks all the way in Cairo over here. Give it up, Cairo. Let's say hello, watching. There you go. So I will tell you, we were supposed to have Scott Guthrie on. We went a little long. He had to take off. But we have some pretty interesting stuff right now. We're with Jeffrey Snowbird. How are you doing, bud? Doing great. What kind of stuff do you do for Microsoft? Okay, so uh, I'm um, the lead architect for Windows Server and the System Center Data Center products. That's excellent. And so what, what are we going to talk about today? What's the thing that's exciting that we're going to talk about? Yeah, so Nano Server. Nano Server. I got a great talk about Nano Server tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Nano Server is a new new exciting headless deployment option for server. Now why is that interesting? Yeah. And the answer is because it's like 20 times smaller than Windows Server Core. Holy server cow. Core was already smaller than server with a GUI. Right. N nano Server is 20 times smaller. So when I, when, I hear, when I hear Nano Server, yeah. I'm thinking like you can put it on a, is it like a regular server that you install or how yeah. does it work? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it's just because it's small doesn't mean it's low power. I see. Okay, so yes, you can put it on these very small devices. In fact, that's what we're going to show okay. when running on a very small device. But it also runs on the very large just the servers. So small is really about the cloud. Got it. Okay. So what I like to tell people is, you know, Windows has been uh, the dominant enterprise operating system. Mm -hmm. That used to be a statement about the desktop. Right. And at some point we said we're going to be the enterprise server. Right. And people laughed at us. Say, what are you talking about, Windows? I mean, you're defining user experience is a blue screen of death. And <laughs> you want me to believe that that's going to be a great enterprise server? Right. And yet today, I don't know if you know this, but 70% of all servers built this year will end up with server on it. That's okay? fantastic. Well, and so what that means is we're able to make that transition. Now it's great, except now the world's moving to the cloud. Right. And so there, whereas some of the world's largest cloud services, Bing, Azure, Office, are running on Windows Server, it's just a statement of fact that today most startups are not choosing Windows as their first choice in cloud operating systems. Right. My job's to fix that, all right, well, and I'm gonna, and that's what Nano Server is all about. Fantastic. So Nano Server then is just a smaller footprint. OS, is that what it is? Well, it's an OS optimized for the cloud. I see, and what yeah. does that mean for a developer? Yeah. Why would I put stuff on Nano Server, or what kind of software would I put on Nano Server? So, to begin with, Nano Server is focused in on two scenarios. Okay. The first is cloud OS infrastructure. Okay. So, this is the fabric that you're going to run the cloud on. So, think of clustered hypervisor and clustered storage. Okay. So, infrastructure components. The second scenario is the developer scenario. I see. And that is born in the cloud applications. So Nano Server uh, provides them a very small, very lightweight environment to run things where the maximal resources are applied to their application, not the OS. I so see. just as for instance, um, Nano Server consumes one half the amount of kernel memory as server core. Oh, that's amazing. So you have more space to do your crazy application stuff. Exactly. Okay. And if you're trying to run your applications on a server, you can run more of the VMs on that server. Got it. So why don't you do, why don't you tell us, contrast sort of Docker versus Nano Server. Perfect. That's a good contrast. Yeah. So the, here's the way to think about it. Developers are going to get in front of their developer tool of choice, Visual Studio, uh -huh. and they're going to decide what type of application they want to run, which set of, uh, which target they want, and that's going to be server or nano server. Now, just to be clear, nano server is a version of server, so it's API compatible for all the APIs and functions that are available on it. Got it. But there is no GUI stack. Right. There is no Win32 compatibility, no WoW64, um, and there's no uh, MSI. I okay? see. So you're going to pick, do I want to run uh, against full server, which is focused in on sort of compatibility, uh -huh. or do I want to target cloud applications, I target nano server. You then build your applications, Visual Studio will say, hey, that API is not available here, I see. et cetera. And then you do a build. Now you've got your XE. Now where do you deploy it? And the answer is, you can deploy it on a physical machine, okay. in a virtual machine, or, or in a container. Okay. So that's the way you think okay. of it. Containers are just a way to run applications, 
and containers can run full server applications or nano server applications. I see. So, is there? So, what is the difference between deploying something on a nano server versus a regular server? Because obviously, there's going to be some things yep. missing. What's missing, and how can I learn about that a little bit more? Yeah. So, the key things are the um, the GUI stack. Mm -hmm. You know, GUIs on servers, not a good idea. Right. Right. I've long been telling people, you get your GUIs off the server. I don't think people really had an appreciation for how much that GUI on yeah, a server it eats costs up a them. Lot, yeah. It does. Well, 20x smaller. So the GUI stack is not there. Uh, additionally, there isn't any 32-bit uh, support. Okay. So if we work with some of our partners, it's like, oh, hey, you know what? Get off 32-bit, get on 64. Right. And you know what? That took them like a couple hours. Oh, that's cool. So pretty straightforward. Just retarget the compiler or something. Okay. Yep. And then there's no MSI. So guess what? That all that story about clean up your installation. Now you got to clean up your installation. Right, I see. And that's and that's right, right? Because what it does is in the cloud, you don't want to have a model where you you know you have this precious little server that you, you know, have you heard this thing about pets and cattle? No, I haven't. Oh, the DevOps guys have a phrase. They say, well, the difference between sort of enterprise model and, uh -huh. and cloud model is the difference between pets and cattle. You want to treat your servers not like pets, where you give them a name, when you get sick, you, you bring them to <laughs> the vet cool. and you care. You want to treat them like cattle. You give them numbers. You, you tag their ears and then give them a number. And if something goes wrong, you just get rid of it and get another one. I and it's see. all about mass management. So that's really what we're going for, is a DevOps style of management. So you manage it with desired state configuration, mm -hmm. PowerShell desired state configuration for configuration. You do automation. You par participate in a DevOps workflow. So you'll see, we'll give demonstrations of, of a nano server being provisioned using Chef. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's crazy cool. So let's talk about the devices that you, can you put, for example, nano on a small device like a Raspberry Pi? No, Raspberry Pi is, a, is an Atom device, okay. and server does not uh, support Atom at this point. Okay. So it's uh, x86 only, 64-bit okay. uh, only, uh, but yes, you can get very small uh, x86, you know, 64-bit uh, x86 devices. But it also runs on the very largest. So we showed that. We showed a nano server running on, I think, a 160-core server, HP server, with a terabyte of RAM. And uh, we had a thousand VMs running on that. I see. And, and we were only using 10% of the memory. Holy cow. It's and crazy. So here's the thing. So when I hear nano, for yeah. some reason, I'm thinking like, devices, but when you say nano, you mean this is a small footprint OS that's just like a workhorse yeah, to do exactly. whatever kind of stuff. So tell me about, have you done some experiments on the kind of throughput or the kind of sort of gains you get by using nano instead of the full stack GUI OS? Yeah, so mostly those gains are in the area of things like installation. So setup, a setup of a server core takes like 300 seconds, and a nano server, it takes 40 seconds. So talk about agile. Also in the area of uh, security and serviceability. So again, in the cloud, you don't want to have to be patching, patching, yeah. patching, especially in the, like, the cloud fabric. So imagine you got a host that you have to patch. You got to do something with those VMs if you have to do a reboot. You got to move them off if you have live migration or you have to shut them all down and restart them if you don't have live migration. Anyway, so uh, what we did was we analyzed all the patches that Windows Server took in 2014. And then we said, how would these apply to nano server? Here's what we found. That's clever. Only one out of 10 of the critical patches applied to nano server. Because they were all GUI, GUI related cruft stuff. Yep. The so. second was it translated into one quarter the number of reboots. So four times fewer reboots. So in essence, I, I, really, I really like the idea of saying, look, my application is king here. I want to run like, I, say for example, can you run like I, a, a small K server and run ASP.NET on there using core.NET Core? Yes, that's exactly what we're doing. You see, and so now you have the ability to just say, my website is important. I don't care about any window or anything or any, I don't need to MSI it, I can bin deploy that. And you can literally scale this thing to huge proportions using nano server. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's That's awesome. the heart of it. The heart of it is you should only incur the, the uh, you should only have the components that you need to get your job done. I see. Anything that's installed that isn't directly supporting your job getting done, uh, resources being consumed, uh, security exposure, serviceability uh, uh, liabilities that, that don't help you. 
That's, so don't have them. That's awesome. So is there a place where people can download this and look at it? Is it going to go live soon? Yes, it's going to be available in the next preview of Windows Server, and I'm not sure when we're giving that out, this okay. week or next week, okay. pretty darn soon. Okay. Well, and uh, we're going to have it available on Azure as well. All You'll right. Be able well, to go play with it there. Make sure we get some questions in because this is, uh, this is pretty good. Uh, do you have any questions coming in? All right, so let's put the questions up on the screen so I can take a look at them. But I have a couple of other questions. Sure. So we talked about running the, the .NET Core yeah. on the nano server. What other applications have you seen for the uh, nano server? So we're early days, but we're working with people and it's going pretty well. So we've got the uh, ASP.NET. Uh, we're working with the IAS team. Uh, what I'm going to show, okay, so you're getting a little hint here. Okay, don't tell anyone. Don't this tell is anyone secret. This yet. is embargo yeah. until next, till tomorrow. Shh. Okay. Uh, I've got a demonstration of Chef, which runs on using Ruby, uh -huh. uh, provisioning Nginx and Django on top of Nginx. <laughs> That's cool. On Nano Server. That's really cool. Yeah. So we do have some questions. Daniel yeah. asks. How do we manage the nano server? Is there a dashboard or something? Because there's no more like GUI to manage stuff. How do you manage it? Yeah, so there's two answers. First is remote GUIs work. Okay. Right? We like, a lot of people think, um, because I'm the father of PowerShell, they think, oh, Jeffrey doesn't like GUIs. I love GUIs. I just don't want them on my server. Get those right. things off the server. So GUIs belong on the client. And so uh, all the, and you do remote management. So cool. server manager works against nano server. Uh -huh. um, the, uh, a bunch of the remote administration tools work against that. And come to my session tomorrow, I'm going to be showing, I think we're going to show it tomorrow. If I don't show it tomorrow, I'm definitely going to show it at Ignite. Okay. We're going to show, we have a new web-based way to do things. That's using, so clever. Yeah, using the uh, Azure portal. And it's gorgeous. You wouldn't believe this thing. And a lot of times people have said, oh, well, hey, that's great, uh, great story, but you know, there's this tool, this tool, and this tool that don't really work well remotely. Uh -huh. Those are the tools. Guess what tools we're working on? And those are showing up in the web browser. So device manager. Device manager shows up in the web browser. That's really cool. That I, love, I love the idea of because I'm a software guy, right? And whenever someone says, hey, I got to set up a server, I'm just like, hey, can, can someone else do that? I mean, because <laughs> then you got to install the server, then it's going to take forever. And so then what you can do with a nano server is just sort of have a little bitty thing running your applications. Yeah, exactly. All right. Now, well, the other way you manage it, of course, is through automation. Right. You do, you, the other way, to, more the DevOps way to do it is PowerShell and desired state configuration. Because one of the kind of key principles of the cloud is you want configuration as code. Right. So you don't necessarily want to go to that machine and make it a special pat. What you want to do is you want to say, here's my configuration. I check in, it's a text file. Yeah. So you check it into source code control. If you want to make a change, you check it out, you do this. You take a look at it, and when we're happy, then we check it back in, and then we deploy it. And if something goes wrong, like, oh no, that was the wrong thing to do, guess what we do? We well, go back to yeah. source code control, get the previous version, and say, use this one instead. So that's that kind of cat cattle management mindset. I see, and so what facilities does Nano Server have? Like, for example, let's just say I want to start my own sort of VM server farm with Nano Server. Yeah. How, what is the easiest and best way to do that today? Oh, well basically it, it works with all the same management tools. It's, it's just a Windows Server tool, mm -hmm. right? Or a version of Windows Server. So Hyper-V Manager is going to work, WDS is going to work, uh, System Center is going to work. Got it. All right, so keep your questions coming about Nano Server. It's a really interesting technology. So you said something interesting, and I must admit, I don't use it as much as I would like, but you said something about PowerShell. Yeah. Tell me what, what did you do for PowerShell, or what is your role in PowerShell, and what is it for those that haven't looked at it? Okay, so PowerShell is an automation, distributed automation environment for Windows, mm -hmm. and I was the inventor of PowerShell. What? Yeah. Look at that, there's like shiny sparks coming out right now. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, what that really means is I hired a great team and gave them the <laughs> room to do the, the best work. That's fantastic. So, so what are the kinds of things you can do with PowerShell? Maybe a better question is, what are the things you can't do? Let's start with what you can. What kind of things can you do with PowerShell? <laughs> yeah, what you can't, I don't know that there's anything you can't do. Because yeah, the, that's the great power of PowerShell, is that it can do everything. You know, we, what we try and do is we try and deliver a world of high-level task-oriented abstractions, where you just think about what you want, type it, and get it. 
But if you can't do that, then PowerShell has the ability to do everything. You can go down and talk to all the .NET APIs, you can talk to COM, you can talk to WMI, you can do P invokes, you can do everything within PowerShell. Yeah, but absolutely. again, it's all about trying to create an environment of high level task oriented abstractions. Now, the interesting thing is PowerShell desired state configuration. I see. That's a new model. It's more of a declarative approach that basically says, remember the old Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. Jean-Luc Picard sit there and said, here's the way I want the world. Make it so. Yeah. That's the way the desired state configuration is. You declare the way you want the world to be and then say, make it so. And then we take that model and we go make it so in the world. I see. So I've used PowerShell before and it loads up. It looks like a very DOSy kind of command thing, but it's also a scripting language. What kind of language is it? Yeah, exactly correct. It is a combination of an interactive uh, uh, host and a scripting language. So think of it as Shimmer, right? It's a okay. dessert topping and a floor wax <laughs> together. Cool. All right, well we have some more questions coming in. Graham Horner says, will there be versions of SQL Server that run in Nano Server? That's a really good question. Nothing to announce today, but watch that space. Stay tuned, holy, holy cow. So Sasha, is the Nano Server version the one that will be running on IoT devices? I asked you a little bit about that before. Yeah, no, so as you know, we're all based upon this common code base. Mm -hmm. So it's a common code base and a bunch of the things that we did benefited the IoT guys, a bunch of the things the IoT guys benefit us, but at this point, no, it's a separate uh, uh, SKU. Got it, okay. Adelino says, what about license in Nano Server? So the way to think about Nano Server is it's just a deployment option for a regular server. I so you see. got your Windows Server SKUs and then you can install it with Server Core mm -hmm. or with Server with the GUI or with Small Business Essentials or with Nano Server. Got and it. then again, you got standard and data center and however that all works. That's excellent. All right, so there's more questions. You guys scroll it up, scroll it down a little bit so I can see it. But they're, they're getting to it. So here's another question. Yeah. So with Nano Server, did you just look at the server and say, we don't need this, we don't need that, what can we take out? Is that how it went? I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the thought process that went around for building Nano Server. Yeah, so basically it's the, it's the kind of ground up. Uh -huh. So we start off and say, hey, what are the things we need for this environment? So it started off very, very small. And then as we said, well, here's a scenario that we want, then effectively we're page faulting in the APIs. You, so you start off with nothing, right? and then you effectively page fault in based upon the scenarios, oh, I see. what things to bring in. And so often that would require us to do big refactorings. I should tell you, this has not been an easy project. No, it's, this project's it's been going hard. on for years and years and many, many years. So I got to tell you, we're just delighted that we can finally talk about it. Because I'll tell you, they say these engineers have been working on this for a very long time. It's like working from the ground up, <coughs> but from the top down at the same time and trying to make sure you meet that sweet spot of the functionality that you want from a server and getting rid of the footprint that you don't want. And it's important to note that that line of what is a nano server is not a fixed line yet. Right? So as we go and we work with, uh, say, the, the chef guys to get it refactored and working on, on this, we found, oh, here's a couple APIs that they need. And so then we go and we'll get those APIs. So as we work with each one of the teams, we're finding out, have, have we found the right thing? Got it. So here's another question. Does Nano Service support all the existing web applications? <clears throat> no. So what's the boundary? Yes, so currently we work with ASP, what we focused in on is ASP.NET V5. Okay, the so, DNX new stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, we will not have the full .NET running on Nano Server. What pro, so it's like, I usually think of this as different profiles. Yeah. What profile would be running on the Nano Server? Or what is it the .NET runtime that will be on the, the Nano Server? It's the core CLR version. Got it. So what do we call that? .NET Core? .NET Core, that's .NET right. .NET Core runs on Nano Server, not the full, what do they call it, the desktop profile? What are the yeah, other there's profiles? Yeah, there's a full .NET client, there's a client profile and there's the full .NET. There's tons of different flavors, but if you're running, if you're running on the next stuff of ASP.NET, it sounds like it's going to work just fine. Yeah, absolutely, yes. All right, so here's some more questions. Can you run features and roles like a DNS server inside a container on Nano. So, okay, so let me go back and be clear about what I said. Okay. The first version of Nano Server is focused in on two scenarios. Okay. Cloud OS infrastructure, that literally means Hyper-V and storage and clustering. Got it. And then born in the cloud applications. So here we're working to get all the interesting language runtimes. 
<coughs> ASP.NET, uh, C Sharp, Ruby, JavaScript, Java, Python, PHP, getting all those to run in that environment. That's stage one. Over the course of time, um, AS, uh, Nano Server will be the foundation of server, and you'll be able to install additional roles on top of it. That's clever. So in essence, your, your OS becomes like this big puzzle. You have the, the most important part, and if you want to add some more stuff around it, you'll be able to do that in the future. Exactly. So we're learning some of our lessons when we did uh, server core. So we did server core. We weren't very clear about what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. We basically said, this is the server should, you should use. Everybody should be on it. And when we did that, it was harder to have very clear conversations around, okay, I'm going to talk to you later, but you, you, I need you to refactor your code right now. Oh, okay? And so it allowed us to get pointy. Here's the scenarios, therefore I know what success and failure looks like, and therefore I manage it appropriately. That's awesome. And then we'll go and expand it to the next round and the next round and the yeah. next round. As a programmer, I've always found it better Make something that works, then make it better. Exactly. And so that's good. All right, so there's more questions. Are there any PowerShell commandlets available now for Nano? It sounds like there okay, are. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about PowerShell. So because PowerShell is based upon .NET, uh -huh. the full .NET is not available on Nano Server. Right. <clears throat> so we have a new version of PowerShell based upon Core CLR. Oh, that's awesome. And okay, so, that makes sense. Yes, and so this was actually quite a bit of work. And uh, so we have that up and running. Most of the language features are available in uh, running now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're working on a very long tail of commandlets to get up and running. Okay. But there'll be certain things that won't be there. In particular, Windows Workflow will not be available. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a not full so, framework kind of thing. Exactly. That's not so much of a problem because uh, as, a, as a managed element, you don't have to run Workflow on it. Right. You can run Workflow on another machine and it can participate in the Workflow Got it. due to the magic of PowerShell remoting. Okay. But we have full PowerShell remoting uh, yeah, so we got, uh, and then a new set of commandlets. In fact, part of this is uh, a lot of things that we wanted to do uh, in PowerShell, we said, uh, because there was always the ability to RDP in and do something, we say, well, that's a really important thing to do, but there's an alternative. To ship is to choose, let's do these features. Yeah. With Nano Server, there is no local logon. None, zero, nada. Interesting. Cannot. So what that means is it forces us to make sure and go back and say, we have to have full and complete 100% remote manageability. So what that means, now I can do remote file editing over PowerShell, I can do remote <laughs> file transfer over PowerShell, and I can do remote debugging over PowerShell. So these things literally become cattle. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. All right, so there's some more questions. Will there be a need to modify existing apps to work on Nano Server? Almost certainly yes. Okay. So that's the way you should think about it. Now, we'll have these things called uh, reverse forwarders uh, that allow a certain level of application compatibility. <clears throat> and we have used those and been able to bring things over. But really, the right way to do it is to sit and retarget for this environment. It sounds like, like retargeting for that environment anyways is going to make your application leaner and better. Yep because yeah. it's going to work in a better, faster environment. All right, so more questions. Uh, will Nano Server support Docker images like Scott Hanselman presented earlier for ASP.NET? Yes, absolutely, although not initially, which is say not, not next week. Okay. So that'll come in the release after that. But containers, there are two forms of containers, and what goes into them are two forms of PowerShell. Or okay. two form, <laughs> so everything's about PowerShell. No, there's two types of containers. There's Windows Server containers, and there's Hyper-V containers. All right. One is more isolated, more secure than the other. Okay. And then in those containers go two things, server or nano server. I see. Well, thanks so much for spending time with us. I know it was impromptu, but nano server seems like a really interesting thing. Thanks for coming by. Hopefully we'll see more of you tomorrow at your session. Please stop by. Thanks for watching. We'll get you at the next session.